My name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. I am out here in interplanetary space with the Kegel 5. This is a lander that was intended to go to Dres, but now it has, well, a bit of a different purpose. But the thing I want to point out is that it does not have a communication link. Yeah, the issue is that it is still too close to Kerbin, and its antenna is just pointed at Kerbin itself, which gives us this cone. Uh, nope, still not getting a link. And I need uh, a relay antenna to drift into that cone. And Kerbin Station, I have its main antenna pointed at the Kegel 5, and that's probably my best bet. I'm also keeping an eye on these um, geostationary satellites that I have, but the issue is is that the cone is actually above or north of Kerbin's equatorial plane, so we're actually, the, the, the satellites are actually passing underneath. No, no connection from that one either. And the whole reason this is necessary is because you might recall from several episodes ago that the Kermes 1, my crude Drez Explorer, well, had a bit of a staging incident. Yeah, I messed up the staging and it resulted in it losing two full radio tanks of fuel. And now the ship really doesn't have the fuel that's required for these folks to go to Drez, get in orbit, and come on back to Kerbin safely. So the mission of the Kegel 5 here has changed from being a lander to being a fuel depot. But in order to do that, I need to get it to rendezvous with the Kermes 1. And I've been trying for days to try and get this connection and it never seems to, uh, it's still too close to Kerbin for that connection to come in. So I can't adjust its trajectory and get a rendezvous. Nope, not going to happen this time around. Uh, well, I'm, I'm out of time actually because I do have a launch I need to get to. This is the Eve 1, the third and final in my flotilla of crafts that are on their way to Eve to take advantage of the current transfer window that I have. And I'll talk about the mission in this vessel in just a little bit, but uh, why don't I take the opportunity to talk about what else is coming up in this episode. I will continue in my efforts to try and establish contact with the Kegel 5 and try and orchestrate a rendezvous with the Kermes 1 so that we can get uh, that mission in a little bit more of a comfortable safety zone when it comes to fuel. As well, the Karayan 1 is still on its way back from EVE. It has, provide, it has performed a couple of arrow braking maneuvers that I didn't show you last episode, but in this episode it will be making its way back to Kerbin Station and then we need to take the uh, Three members of that crew are ready to level up, not, meant, not also to mention to finish off a rescue mission. I need to get them down to the surface in order for that to work. So we'll be taking my newly crafted Otter X-1 space plane that you saw last episode, and we'll look to see at how it descends uh, down to Kerbin's surface. Anyway, why don't we talk about this vessel here? Functionally and design-wise, too, this is rather like the Drez 1. It's very similar to it, in fact. Uh, and you saw the Drez 1, uh, well, several episodes ago, and it's now on its way to Drez with my other vehicles that are part of that mission. It is a combination communication system, combination mapping satellite, and also has a couple of landers that I plan on dropping down onto Eve's surface. And also, like my interplanetary missions of late, we're going to start this off by doing a pre-orbit burn, which will take care of much of the ejection and send it into an orbit of an appropriate period to get it back down to periapsis in time for its final ejection burn, which is going to be oh, several days from now still. I also made sure, unlike the Kegel 7 from last episode, that this thing does have a probe core and does have a dish antenna. And while I am opening up the dish antenna here, I'm going to point out that I'm going to point this at one of my communications satellite. I'm not going to make the same mistake that I made with the Kegel 5 at the beginning of this video and just point it at Kerbin. Yeah, that's, that's a mistake I make once. Get burned for it. Don't make that mistake again. 
And speaking of past mistakes, this is one that's about to get rectified. Yes! Yes, I have a connection! Okay, let's get back out here, get on this antenna, and point this at Interplanetary Relay 3. Okay, uh, i got to go to Map View and select probes here. It's not showing up on the list. Probes, and let's go... There they are, Interplanetary Relay 3, green, all right, good. I already had that satellite pointed this way, so uh, good. Now we should be good for a connection for a while. Okay, so um, i got to move up this maneuver node. I actually had planned this rendezvous quite some time ago, back when I thought I might have a connection earlier than I did, but it's way back in time, so I have to... Uh, move it so that it is forward in time and then obviously I'm going to have to make some adjustments in order to get this to still rendezvous with the Korion one and now that I've readjusted it all it did was add 19 meters per second to the burn which I which I suppose isn't bad I've got execute going with remote tech Remote tech's going to put it onto the node vector for me, and then it's counting it down. Wow, I'm looking up there at the signal delay. I already have a 3.7 second signal delay due to the speed of light, but that's why we got the flight computer. So, 9, 8, just about there. There we go, okay. This is gonna take a little bit. It's 149 meters per second, this burn. So what we should still, we still have, oh, we still have lots of Delta V, so it should still be lots of fuel for the Kermes once we get there. Oh wait, that gives me an idea. Of course, once we drain the fuel from this, this thing is going to be useless be nice to destroy the evidence. If I adjusted the trajectory of the Kermi so that it was actually going to hit Drez, once this thing rendezvoused with it, it would be on that same trajectory, and then we could just let it hit Drez. It would have been nice to think about that before I performed this burn, but ne never matter. Uh, let's, okay, we are finishing off this burn. Let's get ourselves over to the Kermis and do a little bit of adjusting. Okay, so we'll obviously uh, stop this rotation before doing the burn, but we can at least go out there and take a look at what it's going to take. So I set up a maneuver node, and it turned out that it was only gonna cost me 1.4 meters per second. Like, that's next to nothing compared to the Delta V that it has. So that is certainly worthwhile. And of course, once that is done, I'll have to tweak the encounter with the Kegel 5 once again. But again, I think, in order to just sort of, like I said, get rid of the evidence, I think that is going to be worth it. You know, while I'm here with the Kermis, why don't we check out on how the science lab is doing here. Ooh, 55 science, that's more than I expected. Yeah, these folks are generating three science a day for me, nice. We'll definitely have to transmit that. But then once that was done, it was just a quick jump back out to the Kegel 5. A little bit of readjusting. And we will be coming into our closest approach in about 36 days. That's obviously going to be some episodes into the future. But at that time, we will perform this interplanetary rendezvous and see if we can not steal some of the fuel. Not some of the fuel. All of the fuel from the Kegel 5. Let's start thinking about what's going on right now and take a look at the Orion 1, which is in the depths of its, what, sixth, seventh air braking pass? I don't know, something like that. Clearly too many. <laughs> and I, I mentioned in a previous episode that I do plan on bringing up some air brakes and attaching these to not only the Orion 1, but to the Orion 3 to help cut down on my air braking time. And that's coming up in a supply barge that you should be seeing in the next episode. But while we're doing this, I do want to draw attention to one thing. If we take a look at what Kerbal Engineer is telling us as far as vehicle stats go, you might be seeing that 
Yeah, we have a grand total of 8 meters per second of delta V. It certainly had more than that the last time you saw it when it was leaving uh, Minmus's sphere of influence. Um, yeah, it was actually, um, well, I had a little bit of a moon encounter that I didn't show you. And this was something that a viewer, John Nowak, pointed out to me in the comments two episodes ago. Uh, where he kind of noticed that, you know, uh, as you're coming around Kerbin here, it looks like you're going to be getting a moon encounter. And I replied, oh, no, don't worry. The arrow breaking will fix that and we will miss the moon yeah, oops, I didn't miss the moon, and my uh, orbit got messed up, and I had to spend almost pretty much all of my liquid fuel and oxidizer just to fix my orbit. So here we are with a grand total of 8 meters per second to get back to curve and station. Thankfully, though, I still have almost all of my monopropellant. This thing has quite a bit of monopropellant for the size of, his, of the vehicle itself. So with that final arrow breaking pass done, once up at apoapsis, I used nothing but RCS thrusters to push my periapsis up to an altitude of 120 kilometers, which is the same altitude of the station. And then back down at periapsis, again, using nothing but RCS, we set up our rendezvous. And that rendezvous is not going to be in another 37 minutes, which actually gives me time push something else out of the vehicle assembly building. Now this is just going to be a simple mapping satellite for Minmus, but I wanted to show you something that I completely stole from another YouTuber. I got this octagonal strut here on the bottom and I'm just going to use tweak scale and I want to scale it to be just a little bit bigger than the 1.25 meter size that those batteries are and then we're going to use the translation tool just kind of slide this up, sort of enclose kind of the brains and the power part of this little satellite. Now a little bit lower than that. That's starting to look pretty good. Okay. In fact, I think I might want to make this just a little bit smaller. So we'll get, again, tweak scale out. Scale this down just a little bit. Oops. Come back. Here we go. Oh, yeah, there, there. I think that's looking pretty nice. All right, and uh, I'm going to duplicate the part, put another one up here on top. And then again, I'm going to translate that down to create this sort of little protective cage around the sensitive components of this satellite. And I will admit, I completely stole this. So thank you, Varuk67, for this idea. It is a great one, purely aesthetic, but it sure does look nice. And like I said, this is just a boring mapping satellite, but I do have a contract to go with it. I mean, how about that? And in fact, that's what you're going to start seeing pretty soon is me really starting to focus on starting to finish off some freaking contracts that I've been putting off with all of these interplanetary missions that I've been getting myself involved with. And so this guy went out into the building queue, the Kerbal Construction Time building queue, and should be built shortly. And normally I don't show you my test launches and that kind of thing but this time oh my gosh so darn pretty with the sunrise in the background unfortunately tweaking those octagonal struts did make this too big to fit inside my mark ii space shuttle and my mark iii space shuttle is on a mission that's more important than this one and it's dealing with something that's bigger and you will be seeing that coming up pretty soon so i got myself this cute little lifter Kind of miss building little things like this, to be quite honest. Anyway, meanwhile, the crew of the Korion would like to get back to the station in time for breakfast. Provided, of course, that I can manage to stop them. Now, I'm not going to be doing any docking. You might recall from last episode that I don't have any free berths on Kerbin Station anyway. But sure, st stopping sure would be nice. My monoprop is getting pretty low. Oh, wait, wait, I do still have some LFO. Come on, burn. Oh, this is bringing down my speed nicely. There we go. Just reorient ourselves a little bit. Now oh, we're already down below 2 meters per second. Oh, it's going to be easy peasy now. So uh, I, I think we're close enough here again. Remember, we're not going to dock instead. 
we're just going to bring ourselves to a relative stop with the station. And then we're going to go over to the X1, and Valentina is going to fly it over to the Karayan 1. And then once these two things are docked, we're going to be doing all of our, our crew transporting out here. So, uh, closing in here. There we go. And we certainly have some musical chairs to perform here. Uh, Bartner's going to be the only one who's going to stay where he is aboard the Karayan. Stala, Shalkal, and Burke are ready to level up. And so they're going to take the X-1 back down to the surface. And that will also finish off the uh, rescue mission to rescue Burke. And then Valentina's going to get aboard the Karayan as its new pilot. And then fly that back to the station. And also while I'm doing all this, I'll get the X-1 transfer over maybe a little bit of its monoprop over to the Karayan 1. Uh, yeah, it was a little bit. I want to make sure I have enough there for docking. So we'll just get the Karayan 1 over to the station. And then we'll get ready to descend the, the X-1 here. And we'll do this all just with monoprop. No reason to rush. Let's get our prograde vector a little bit more on to the target there. And wait a second, the science! Oh my gosh, we got science from Minmus. Okay, uh, the X1 is back there, but it's moving away from the station. So let's fire up these engines. <laughs> that sound is so dramatic. And let's just get it moving towards the station. So at least it's not. There we go. We'll deal with that later. Okay, let's <laughs> let's finish off this docking. And we need to get this docked before uh, the X1 gets here. I said it moving back pretty slowly, so it should be okay. Alright, and then it's time to get the X1. And again, we don't have any docking ports, so we won't be docking. Instead, we will be parking it outside and shell cow. This is your responsibility, man. You're in charge of the science. You almost left it in orbit around Minmus. Now you almost left it in orbit around Kerbin. It's not like I've been collecting a lot of science here, Shell Kyle. I really do need this. Okay, now it should be in the science module at the front of the Karayan 1. So we'll just kind of sneak in here. Alrighty, right click, come on, where is it, there it is, collect the science, alright, okay, Shell Cal, I guess we will forgive you and let you back into the plane here, and of course, once we got Shell Cal aboard, the next step in all this was to descend the X-1 for the first time. And this is where I'll let you know that I've actually never descended this plane before. Not not just in a mission, I mean in simulation and practice, period, ever. Um, <laughs> so I hope it should be okay. I don't see why it shouldn't be okay. Uh, it has jet engines, so I'm able to. I was able to fly it around the KSC, and I practiced some landings on the runway, and all of that went fine. Um, and I've descended, of course different space planes before. I have a space shuttle, I have the Dream Chaser that you've seen before, and uh, they descend as gliders, and I was able to get those, and I don't see why this powered one should be should be easier, right? Not more difficult. Well, I guess we are about to find out. But before we hit the atmosphere, I do have a, a part here that I want to show you. This is a smart part valve. I've actually had this unlocked for a long time. It's Pretty low on the tech tree, but I've never used it before because I used to have TAC Fuel Balancer installed, and TAC Fuel Balancer allows you to dump fuel, so I didn't need this this valve part. Um, but then when we went to 1.1, I just found that uh, you know the, the the menus and being able to pin them to the side was made fuel management in KSP just with the stock tools. So much easier that I felt I just didn't need the fuel balancer anymore, so I got rid of it. So now the valve is the only way I have of dumping fuel. But I'm not 100% sure exactly how it works. 
I want to dump my excess oxidizer because I have no need for it anymore. So what I'm doing is I'm pumping the liquid fuel out of that back tank because that's the tank that the valve is actually attached to. And I don't want to dump the liquid fuel because I could be using that fuel to run my jet engines once we are low enough down in the atmosphere. Okay, so with that done, let's get the part. There is the valve there. And there is a slider on there. It looks like that slider will just make it go slower or faster. So I guess all you can do is just hit toggle. There's no way of specifying what kind of fuel. No, no, I think I'll just hit toggle and, and see what happens. Hopefully it'll just drain out of the one tank it's attached to. There we go. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I could see the liquid fuel going down. Okay, that doesn't work. Oh, I do like the animation of the uh, gases coming out there. That's pretty neat. Yeah, okay. Um, I guess they expect you to have theirs smart part fuel breakers where you can block the fuel flow between different sections of a ship. I guess they want you to use those. Okay, well, uh, might need a bit of a redesign, so uh, let's just get us down into the atmosphere and get the descent out of the way. So we are just here now in full belly flop mode, which is the way I like to go in and hold this as long as I can. And what I did with the oxidizers, I decided to use it as ballast. So I punched, or I punched it. I pumped it as far forward as I could. And I've got some windows there set up to be, to pump it backwards should the plane feel out of balance. I'm sure right now it is front heavy, which is actually rather what I want. And uh, as far as the other, wait, wait, oh, wait a second. Hang on, hang on, hang on a second. I just thought of something looking at those tanks. Can I just turn off this tank? And now if I vent this valve with that now turned off, I don't think it should drain liquid fuel. Let's see. Nope, the liquid fuel is not going down, but the oxidizer is. That's awesome. Ooh, ooh. Do you notice how that actual, I am getting some, uh, some thrust? <laughs> I think that's a really nice little touch that it actually gives some thrust to that and pushes the plane back a little bit. The valves actually come in two different types. There's a type with a straight valve, and then there's type with a valve that comes out and turns at 90 degrees so that you can direct that thrust if you so want to, if you want to direct that thrust in a potentially useful direction. Okay, so I guess I'm not using oxidizer as ballast now. I suppose I will be using the monoprop as ballast. That's fine, but I'm glad that valve worked. Uh, also, in addition, I as far as I have a lot of windows there on the left, I also have the windows open for the um, whiplash engines getting ready to turn them on. Obviously, I need to be lower in the atmosphere than this. And there, I just turned on the air intakes. I figured I might as well. And I'm also assuming about a 30 degree pitch. I'm noticing I'm coming, looks like I'm coming a little bit short Again, I don't know, sometimes I'm short, sometimes I'm long. I'm having a little bit of issues judging getting myself to the runway, but I think it should really help having the jet engines and being able to fire them up and actually having some useful propulsion once we're down in the lower part of the atmosphere. Okay, I'm just looking at that air intake. You know, I think I might as well turn on those whiplashes. I don't think they'll be doing anything for me just yet, but uh, I don't think it hurts to turn them on. There we go. Okay, we can get rid of these windows. The only windows I have left there are windows for monoprop, so I can pump monoprop around in case I need to. But to be honest, I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. You can see the Kerbal Space Center there coming up. Closing in on 140 kilometers away. And now over the continent. It has the Kerbal Space Center in it. The plane itself descended beautifully. I never, it was easy to control. Maybe the easiest space plane I've yet had. Okay, 
and we are closing in on the mountains 27 kilometers in the air and uh, yeah I'm just gonna sort of ride it just a little bit above the prograde vector hopefully glide right in I think I can safely slow myself down a little bit Ooh, that's working that's working really really quickly okay let's 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 get those uh those brakes back down oh i wonder if i slowed myself down a little bit too much anyway don't need the waypoint anymore i know where the kerbal space center is i'm not i'm not getting any action out of those whiplashes okay there's a noise i just throttled up but i still have zero meters per second at Delta V according to Kerbal Engineer. Do I just have, do I have to put the fuel into those radial tanks on the side? Ooh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I have no thrust. Let's pump that liquid fuel. Oh, yeah, now the Delta V and the thrust numbers are going up. Okay, there we go. All right, close, close, close. Get rid of that. And now i got a jet again. So I think I slowed myself down a little bit too much there. Yeah. Let's uh, throttle up a bit. I think I'm going to need that speed. Shoot! You know, I think I think I was doing absolutely great until, except for that touch of air brakes that I did over, or, you know, as I was getting close to the mountains. I think that was a bit of a mistake, but. I think the jet engine should save me here. I should be fine. We'll just fly this straight to the runway. Get these folks back down to the surface. Everything is looking good. Oh crap, what? Oh no, I'm out of fuel! Oh shoot, I wasn't paying any attention. Oh, I... Okay, I think I might just come just short. Shoot, I got cocky there. I thought I could just fly like a jet. I wasn't paying any attention to my fuel. And I'm out of fuel. No, definitely not. Okay, just put it on prograde. Keep your speed up. And get this thing onto the ground. In fact, why don't we put this up to two times speed. Get this over with. Oh, this is so frustrating. I'm so close. Oh, well. The ground here should be pretty flat. These grasslands just to the west. Oh, I can see my lights. And then we'll flare, slow ourselves down a little bit. And boom. Easy peasy. Beautiful plane. Pilot. Uh not so much but we're down oh seven kilometers away so close and with that I think we'll be ending this episode I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time